So question one of the midterm was about secret sharing. A person decides to sh divide a secret into four shares using the numbers K and L. So his secret is N and he divides his secret using these numbers K and L. So what does he do? He takes a secret, he has four people, he divides it among, right? And so let's say I is equal to one, two, three, four. Where one, two, and three, four are the people he divides it among. And you see that the secret SI is equal to N plus KI plus LI times I. What do you see over here? You see that this secret is a quadratic or it's a degree two polynomial. So you have your secret which is, or you have your secret SI or SX let's say, which is like a quadratic polynomial or degree two polynomial which looks like LX squared plus KX plus N. This should give you the insight or an idea as to how to proceed with this problem. So what does problem A ask? Problem A asks that given these three, given these three secrets, or given these three uh, points on the polynomial, how do you construct and get S0? You can see that S0 is equal to N plus K0, K times 0, plus L times 0 squared, which is equal to N. Therefore, S0 is your secret. So given these three points in the polynomial, how do you plug in zero into the polynomial and get the secret out? That's what part A asks for. Now part B asks to you, asks you to prove that given two different points in your polynomial, you need to show that it is not enough if only two people get together and try to extract the secret because two points in the polynomial will tell you absolutely nothing about the secret. And that is what part B asks you to prove. So question one, qu now let's look at part A. So part A gives you three points of your polynomial as in the shares of three different people. So it says S1 is equal to two, S2 is equal to zero, and S3 is equal to two. So all you have to do is construct a degree two polynomial you have to construct this polynomial plus KX plus LX squared from these points. Right, so this is your p of x is equal to this. So what you can do most easily, maybe this will be a lot of effort though because Lagrangian interpolation is annoying. You could use Lagrangian interpolation. Uh, but Lagrangian interpolation often leads you to make tiny little calculation errors, maybe small multiplication mistakes, maybe you forgot the inverse and you put the wrong inverse, even though it's mod phi, which is prime, maybe, you, maybe you're getting confused with the inverse or something. So an easier way to do this is just to work these out using linear equations. So you know S1 from the question above is equal to n plus k times 1 plus, just put that there, plus l times 1 times 1, which is equal to n plus k plus l, which is equal to, as it's mentioned here, 2. Then you know s2 is equal to n plus k, 2k. One second. 2k plus 4l, just from above. right? And this is equal to 0. S3 similarly is equal to n plus 3k plus 9l, which is equal to 2 again. So now you have three equations. Let's call this equation 1, let's call this equation 2, let's call this equation 3. All you have to do is solve three equations, three variables, and get out n. So question one, qu now let's look at part A. So part A gives you three points of your polynomial, as in the shares of three different people. So it says S1 is equal to two, S2 is equal to zero, and S3 is equal to two. So all you have to do is construct a degree two polynomial. You have to construct this polynomial plus kx plus lx squared from these points. Right, so this is your p of x is equal to this. So what you can do most easily, maybe this will be a lot of effort though because Lagrangian interpolation is annoying. You could use Lagrangian interpolation. Uh, but Lagrangian interpolation 
often leads you to make tiny little calculation errors, maybe small multiplication mistakes, maybe you forgot the inverse and you put the wrong inverse, even though it's mod 5, which is prime. Maybe, you, maybe you're getting confused with the inverse or something. So an easier way to do this is just to work these out using linear equations. So you know S1 from the question above is equal to n plus k times 1 plus, just put that there, plus l times 1 times 1, which is equal to n plus k plus l, which is equal to, as it's mentioned here, 2. Then you know S2 is equal to n plus k, 2k. Right, one second. 2k plus 4l, just from above, right? And this is equal to 0. S3, similarly, is equal to n plus 3k plus 9l, which is equal to 2 again. So now you have three equations. Let's call this equation 1. Let's call this equation 2. Let's call this equation 3. All you have to do is solve three equations, three variables, and get out n. So here are our equations from before. We have these three equations, mod 5. Right? What's the first thing you notice? Mod 5. You can take that off and make it a 4 because it's mod 5. Right? So assume that everything after this, all the equations I put down after this, is going to be, every equation is going to be mod 5. Right? Okay, just assume that so that we don't need to keep writing that out. You can do that in your midterm too and you won't lose any points. Alright, so we have, let's first look at equation 2 minus equation 1. Because we know that the coefficient of n in all the cases are the same, so when we subtract 2 from 1, you know n is going to get cancelled. So basically we can reduce it to get something smaller out. So equation 2 minus equation 1 will give us n plus 2k plus 4l minus n plus k plus l, which is equal to 0 minus 2. This gives us n, oh, no, well, it's just one second. All right, so let's just say n cancels out, right? And therefore, we get 2k minus k is k, and 4l minus l is 3l is equal to negative 2. What is negative 2 mod 5? Which is equal to 3, right? So we have our equation is k plus 3l is equal to 3. This is our big equation. All right, so this is equation number 4, let's say. Let's take equation 3 minus equation 2 which is n plus 3k plus 4l minus n plus 2k plus 4l, which is equal to 2 minus 0. Now we see the 4l gets cancelled and the n gets cancelled. This gives us k, 3k minus 2k is just k, is equal to 2. Wow, so we found out our first number. Right? Let's say this is equation number 5. So here are the latest list of equations. Now we see that we're almost done, right? So if we combine these two equations, what do we get? Let's look at this. So we get, we can remove k from these two equations because we know k is equal to 2 now. So we can remove it from the previous equation and we can get 2 plus 3l. This is equation number 4. 2 plus 3l is equal to 3. This implies 3l is equal to 1. If you know 3l is equal to 1, then you know L is equal to 1 times 3 inverse mod 5. I just wanted to put the mod 5 here because I don't want you to get confused if I'm using inverses. Now what is the inverse of 3 mod 5? You can do it by trial and error and you can see that the inverse of 3 mod 5 is just 2. Why? Because 3 times 2 is equal to 6 which is equal to 1 mod 5. Right? Therefore L is equal to 1 times 2 which is equal to 2. So now we have k is equal to 2 and l is equal to 2. Alright, so now what I've done is that I've put only the important equations, what, you, what we really need now 
to solve the question. So we have n plus k plus s is equal to 2, which is our equation number 1. k is equal to 2, which is our equation number 4 or 4, I think, yes. And l is equal to 2, which is an equation I didn't number, but that's not, imp that's not important anymore. So now we know that n from the above equations, n plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 2 mod 5, right? Therefore, n plus 4 is equal to 2 mod 5. So n is equal to negative 2 mod 5. Therefore, n is equal to 3 mod 5. And therefore, this, this is our secret. It's good if you write something like this at the end of, our, end of your exam, just so that even though your big box will tell the grader that your solution has been reached, it's always good to put a concluding statement. All right, so this is your solution for part one, part A. Right, cool.